Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. My dog's just... Why is my dog freaking out? Coda! Coda! Chill. How's everyone doing today? Um, I got a board on a box. One second. My dog's freaking out. I'll be back in one second. So, uh, enjoy. There, have some music. Okay, I'm back. What did Amazon bring me? Let's see what Amazon brought me. Ooh, live unboxing. Ooh. Resin! I don't have the resin printer yet. Anyways, okay, sorry about that little uh, hiccup there. So today, uh, daytime stream for the European folk. It's a reward for not starting at 4 a.m. Hey, there we go. Okay, so uh, shouldn't be too long of a stream today. I'm hoping about an hour. Um, I got work in a bit, so can't go too long. But we're going to talk about something that comes up a lot lately. Um, and that is kits, Voron kits, okay? Um, I touched on this two or three streams below. Um, Ken, that was a joke from last week. That was a joke. Voron's open source. It's not being sold. It can't be sold. It's open source. There's nothing to sell. It's already all out there. So anyways, um, what was I talking about? So I touched on kits a couple streams ago. Um, so I'm going to kind of reiterate some things about the kits before we open this up okay this is a voron kit this is a voron 2.4 350 millimeter kit um this is a form bot kit okay somebody local to me and a fan of the channel bought one of these and they lent it to me to open this is still sealed i have not looked in this at all it was purchased by him so this is off the shelf this ain't no viewer or streamer privilege kit okay this is straight from the AliExpress. So anyways, Voron kits, okay? I said it before and I said it again. You do not buy a Voron, okay? You build a Voron, okay? Voron Design is a design group. It started off with Russian cat food and people have joined it over the years. I think the design team is technically like 50-ish people now, plus or minus. Um, it's like a think tank cabal type thing where we just throw stuff out there and every now and then something gets released under the name Voron, okay? So, um, this isn't Prusa, this isn't Creality, this isn't any Cubic, this isn't, you know, Strasis. Um, these are hobby machines. They're enthusiast machines, okay? These are printers designed for printer, or printers designed for people who are printer enthusiasts. So, when it comes to building a Voron, you kind of have to know how a printer works before stepping into it. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a printer before you build a Voron. You can have a Voron as your first printer, but that's like starting to drive with a Corvette, okay? So I'm sure you'll have fun, but usually you want to take a baby step first. So the manuals, the, the sourcing guide, everything's kind of set up that you kind of know what you're doing before you go into it. The manuals are kind of how to assemble it, but... They're not step by step. So if you want to buy a Vora, okay, because you watched uh, CNC Kitchen's video on it, or you see that people talk about them all the time now, and every time you see a live chat of anything printer related, somebody brings up Voron. So please turn my calendar to April. There we go. My fatest calendar is now April. So anyways, um, 
So you, you, you know, you, you're new into 3D printing and you want to buy a Voron, okay? Because you've you seen Stefan mentioned it. So you, you go on AliExpress, you buy the kit, you download the manual, and you're, you're expecting like a Prusa-like experience. It is not that. If you've never crimped a wire before, if you've never um, set an end stop, if you've never looked at printer firmware, if you've never even calibrated flow settings on your printer, um, you're going to want to do some research before jumping into building a Voron, okay? The manuals are, most of them are over a year old at this point. And at the time, the, the people building Vorons has changed a lot in the past year. Voron's been around for now five years since Russian Cat Food started it. And in four and a half years, we reached 1,000 serial Vorons. That was six months ago. Last weekend, we broke 2,000. So we're seeing a lot of people coming into the community that have very little to no experience building a Voron or building a 3D printer at all. Uh, they're buying these kits because it that's, you know, the kits are there and they're easy. And we're getting slammed with questions in, in the help channels. And uh, that's a lot of repeat stuff. A lot of stuff in the kits isn't to spec. Um, a lot of people don't know the basics of wiring and whatnot because the manuals don't really go through all the wiring because they're kind of assuming, hey, you're building your own printer from scratch. You should kind of know how to wire it up. So stuff is being updated, okay? Um, you gotta take into account though, this is all dedicated time, okay? This is all people on their own free time. We're not, nobody's making, Voron Design is not a money-making enterprise by any means. Um, but there is some work being done to try and update manuals for future revisions and whatnot. Um, to take into account this new audience that is building Vorons, okay? So we're hoping to try and get things a little bit better. That's why, you know, my that's why I do the live streams and whatnot, and I show the whole build. It, it's not, okay, I'm going to, you know, wire it between the, the streams. I'm going to wire it live on stream because I know it helps a lot of people. And uh, I know a lot of people wouldn't have built their printers or got them completed if it wasn't for the live stream. So the live streams are kind of like a stopgap. Um, to at least show those that uh, that kind of don't know how to fall or don't know how to do it exactly to kind of give them a little bit of knowledge um so on the subject of kits this is going to sound very gatekeepery and i don't mean it in any offensive way but having to source your own components made the barrier to entry a little bit higher so that really those that were really dedicated to it would build the printers and we weren't seeing this issue now Two clicks on AliExpress and this arrives at your door and it's a full bar of boron. So the barrier to entry is much lower. So we're getting a lot of people that are buying these kits and coming into the community. And the problem with the kits is we have zero control over them. Uh, at first they weren't too bad. There was some really weird funky stuff like weird SSRs and whatnot. But now we're actually starting to see some of the kit manufacturers that had okay kits uh, starting to substitute parts out because either they're trying to make more money off of them or demand is much higher than they expected and they just legit have run out of stock and they're just grabbing what they can. Um, we're starting to see complete no-name motors with off-centered uh, drive shafts showing up. Like, literally two to three thousand play in the drive shafts. That, that ain't great. Um, we're seeing uh, wires that are the incorrect length. We're seeing PVC wires. They're shipping with PVC wires, not uh, silicone or the recommended PTFE wires now. Uh, they're pre-assembling some stuff like the BAT85 diode is being soldered onto the wires uh, backwards. So your probe ain't gonna work. Um, shortages of screws, shortages of components. Um, if you're buying a kit and it says it comes with high wind rails, it does not come with high wind rails. It comes with generic Chinese rails that somebody laser engraved high went on. I've bought rails from two different vendors that have high went on them that they're not high wind. Like they were never advertised as high wind. They just all come out of the same bin. Um, so you have to be very careful with these kits. Now, who do I recommend the kits for? If you've never built a printer before, and the problem is this isn't going to get to the people that need it. A lot of people are buying these kits and downloading the manual and just going to town. And what we're worried about is somebody is not on the Discord. They don't watch my videos. They, they're completely separate from the Voron ecosystem. And they, they you know, they, they have an Ender 3 or whatever, and they want to build a Voron. So they go on AliExpress, 
They search for the kit and they buy the cheapest kit because people are cheap. We can't help that people are cheap, okay? Um, they go buy the cheapest kit from CN4445828 uh, number one store off AliExpress. It's got two orders, okay? But it's the cheapest one, so they buy it. And they go home and they download the manual. Um, and they start building and uh, they make some guesses because, hey, I, I, you know what, I, I, I swapped out the extruder on my Ender, I can do this. And the SSR is wired is backwards. And the moment they turn the printer on, everything runs away or they get a short or the wires are incorrect spec and they start shorting wires down the line. And you, you're, you don't know what you should be looking for because hey, it's the kit. I just bought the kit. The kit has everything I need. What do you mean uh, the, the, the bed itself, the wiring on the bed is insufficient? And we've, we've seen heater mats come in where the wires have fallen off the mats. Like the mains wires have fallen off the mats. Um, or the wires are just too thick and they don't work with the, uh, the design. Um, we've seen the 80 tooth gears for your Z drives on the 2.4. Uh, one of the vendors is selling ones that are bigger than the spec ones. So they literally don't fit in the printed parts. Um, cause most of these vendors don't build Vorons. They just say, Hey, we can make money selling the kits. And they just walk down Shenzhen, uh, the, the market in Shenzhen with a cart and they're just throwing stuff in the cart that, okay, 80 tooth gear. This is an 80 tooth gear. How much per thousand? That's cheap. Throw it in the cart next. Um, so this is a four bot kit here and this is completely unopened. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through it. Okay. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to point out everything that's good, everything that's bad. And I'm going to talk about what you should be looking for. Okay. So this is again, completely unopened. Uh, this was lent to me. So I'm going to have fun trying to get this all back in the box. This is a boron 2.4, 350 millimeter spec. Okay. I haven't been paying attention to the chat. I got to catch up on it. Uh, those that donated, you guys are awesome. Um, I heard the little thing in my ear a few times, but, uh, Thank you, as always, anyone who donates or becomes a member or anything, that goes all right back into the channel, into the stream, helps me do the things I do and create the content I create. So what I'm gonna do is basically try and, this is a big box, by the way, it's, it's as deep as it is wide, it's a big box. So I'm gonna try and not damage, well, not damage, I'm gonna try and keep everything ordered because I gotta send this all back to Buddy. Um, but as far as I know, this is a full kit. now. Let me see here because he had some issues. So let me pull it up here. I'm not going to say his name and whatnot. So uh, some points. He paid an extra $10 to get this shipped via FedEx. Um, they still shipped it with DHL. Okay. Um, and he paid uh, $54.99 in taxes. Um, and this is Canada. So his kit for the 350, this was the kit he purchased. It was a 350. So $1,173 Canadian plus, uh, what was his shipping? Uh, yeah, let's see here. So yeah, 123 shipping, but he played extra for FedEx, but they still shipped it DHL and he's still waiting on a refund. So there's that. You also have to remember if you're in like North America, it's a 12 hour difference. So if you're trying to contact them about anything, it's like a 12 hour turnaround because they're opposite. So let's take a look here. John Clark, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Schrodinger's Voron. It's in the box. So we have panels. Okay. So I'm not going to dig through these panels because they are, uh, so these are the panels. It comes with panels. Okay, so we have the clear panels for the front, the sides. We got, uh, these look like acrylic, black acrylic. So these are the panels and they're right on top. And they got like, it's a mess. So I'm not gonna dig through these. I'm gonna assume they're cut well because they're probably all machined at the same time. So I'm not gonna dig through these because I'm not gonna make a mess in my room here uh, before I go to work. So it does come with the panels. They look okay. Um, this one doesn't have a protective film on it and it is already scratched to all hell. Like there's already a bunch of scratches in this one. So this is the back panel, I believe. And it's already scuffed up pretty bad. Um, the other side has a protection on it. So at least you can put this crappy side out. So 
see here. Try and not make a mess. Okay, Ender, you're going away. Goodbye, Ender. Shove the Ender in the corner. That's where it belongs. Is it dead or alive? It is alive from the looks of things. So we got some bubble wrap. Is it the good bubble wrap? It is the unpoppable bubble wrap. Oh, it's the bad bubble wrap. This is bad. I, I'm already disappointed because it's the bubble wrap that don't pop. Okay, what else do we got here? Uh, electronic stuff. Little keystone switch. So here, let me... Let me put this on the ground. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it out and then we'll take it. So. Okay. JSC connectors. Uh, this is the generic box you can find on Amazon or whatever. These are what I use. These are fine. JSC connectors, fine. Okay. Um, that's another thing. These ki This kit, I believe, did not come with controller. It might come with a controller. He said he... Oh, it does come with a controller. Okay, I'll get to that. A lot of the controllers now, because um, SKR, um, or Big Tree Tech, isn't making the 1.4 anymore. So, um, they're subbing out for the Two Trees 1.5. Okay, SKR 1.5. The pinout is the same, but nobody's gotten their hands on it on the dev team, so we actually don't know the quality of the board. Okay, so you're, you're kind of taking a shot in the dark there with the board. Um and you really don't know if the board's going to be good long term because we never you know nobody's touched that board before um i think they're going to start moving to the spider th soon because if the spider the production units turn out okay that's probably going to be the uh the main the main controller going forward is the spider there's that okay Lala Hell, thank you for becoming a member. What else do we got? Belts. Belts, belts, belt. So these are GT2 9mm. So they're pre cut, okay? So these are your Z belts. They come individually pre cut, it looks like. I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I'd rather it just be one continuous length with a little bit of extra. And that's going to see something you're going to see a lot of. Um, they ship with what the manual, what the bomb says. So if you need four of these idlers, you get four of these idlers. Hope you don't lose any. So for the belts, they look similar to the Gates belts, the Triangle Labs Gates belts. Like you can see that the the fiber on the outside but they're not labeled so oh wait nope they are labeled there we go these are gates i'm trying I, i'm not opening anything because this isn't my kit so i really don't want to make a mess but it does say gates on them so there you go gates power grip so these are Gates belts, so we are okay there on the belts. But again, your, your nine millimeter or your six millimeter belts for your XY are cut already. I'd rather them ship a continuous length with a little bit of extra to see how more wiggle room there, right? Like when I buy belts, I buy belts by like 30 meters. Like you buy a whole whack load of it because hey, you accidentally cut one short or one got damaged. Uh, well, now you have no extra, okay? Um, yeah, I, I, I like having extra just in case. Okay. So again, idlers, these are, you can, I can open it, Ken. Okay. I'll open what I think I need to open. Okay. Idlers here. Now these are your upper Z idlers. No clue what brand these are.
Really? One second here. Cried. Okay. Your upper zed idlers, these are MXL. These aren't 2GT or GT2. So on 2GT, it's curved at the top. On MXL, it's a flat top. Um, it's going to be really hard to see here. I don't know if I can even get this on camera. But that's flat top. These are MXL. So these are the wrong upper idlers. MXL. These are not 2GT. Or GT2 or whatever. They're close enough. But uh, MXL is no S bueno. It should be a consistent curve. MXL is, a, the top is flat. Like the top of the, the tooth is flat. So upper idlers. <clears throat> Let me get a notepad going here. Okay. Okay. Next thing. Um, our belt loops look fine. They're gates. The belt loops are fine. Yeah, so this is a Formbach kit. Uh, we have a, what's it called? A Kingston or Kensington. Uh, it's a Cat 6 to Cat 6 connector if you want to have like a plug. That's a nice little add on. This isn't really required if you're going Wi Fi, but that's a nice little, you know, five cent thing they include. Okay, so we've got our pin for our Z offset. Hopefully that's the right size. Uh, you got your neodymium magnets. It looks like they, oh yeah, because the latches use them now. We got our magnets and our M4 knurled nuts. These are for your bed standoff. So these are all okay. Those are okay. Here's the thing you'll notice with a lot of these kits. Most of it's fine. It's just you're going to find the odd thing that's out, and now you're going to have to rebuy. Because if you order it all at once, yeah, it takes time to come in. But now you got to order the right upper idlers, and you're going to be waiting for those to come in. So. Okay. Wire. Silicone wire. Um... I don't know how much this is. 20 gauge. So there's your 20 gauge silicone wire. Um, and that's for your heater. And here's the rest of your wire. 24 gauge. This is for all your everything else. It's just this one continuous brand of silicone. So we're starting, we're moving away from silicone. Okay. Um, silicone, the reason silicone is spec and it's going to be changing to PTFE. If you haven't, if you're still haven't bought your wires yet, get PTFE. Um, so the reason for silicone is Cat5 was getting destroyed. Um, there's a few guys on the team that make, uh, that play with the quads, you know, the drones. And silicone is super awesome in that, and it's super bendy, so we figure, hey, that's going to be great in drag chains. And it was okay-ish in the, uh, the tape chain, but when we switch to, uh, drag chain itself, uh, some of the cheaper chains wear through the silicone because it's soft. So... This wire is okay as long as you like lather it in lube or put a sleeve over it, but I really would wish they went with PTFE wire. For reference, two of my two V2s have silicone wire. Same with my switch wire. Um, I will be switching them to PTFE later, but this has several thousand hours with silicone wire. So as long as you know you do it right, it does work. You just have to be careful with. Um, it being too tight in the drag chain. There's a proper way that you have your wires installed in a drag chain. I'll cover that when I get to it with the uh, Toasty Boy build, but you have to secure both ends. If it's just flopping in there, you're gonna rub it. Okay. So the wire, I'll, I'll put it down as a, a negative, but 
it technically is still spec. I don't think the, uh, the bombs have been updated to that. And again, they order just what's on the bomb. They, they don't check discord to see what's current, right? Screws and whatnot. Why do I keep hitting the wrong button? Hey, they have the right heat set inserts. Okay. Peanuts. Um, ooh, brass washers. So your one millimeter shims are brass. That's kind of shiny. It shouldn't really affect anything. Now here's the thing with these nuts and everything. And this is the problem you're going to run into. And we've seen a few people. They sell like these. If, if the bomb says 50, they have 50. If the bomb says 42, they have 42. Okay. So they, I don't know if they're finally fixing that because people have been complaining constantly about it, but you, you drop an M38 and you're, you're down an M38. Okay. Or they accidentally counted 39 instead of 40. You're down a screw. So the screw, the, these themselves are fine. Yeah. It's Chinese crappy screws. Like if you know screws, you know, there's different quality of screws and these aren't the greatest quality usually, but it's a 3d printer out of plastic and aluminum. You don't need 12, nine screws or whatever the, the, the standard good quality ones are. Um, so if the quantity is correct, you're fine, but compare that to the LDO kit that I got with, uh, for the V1 build that comes with a bag of extras. Okay. Because LDO took our advice and included a bag of extras. So I have extra screws and washers and spacers and T nuts in there because they listen to our advice. We got that. Okay. Um, what is he? 16 tooth idlers. These are correct. These are, these ones are fine. Yeah. These ones are fine. 16 tooth are fine. We're trying to go through hardware and then go on to the electronics, but it's, it's unfortunately everything's just thrown in here. Oh, here, that's great. Hey, what's under this? Oh, hey, look, here's my drivers. Just kind of thrown in there. <laughs> that's always good. Okay, fans. So we got some Sunon Maglev fans. Are they real Sunons? I don't know, but there's three of them. 24 volt. They're fans. They go burr. Random uh, filter. This thing, I can see through it. So I really don't think this is going to do much uh, filtering considering you can see the light through it. <laughs> so yeah, it comes with a filter. Oh, I missed one. Magic Studio Kit. Yeah, the Magic Studio Kit and the LDO doesn't have a full kit yet, but Magic Studio has been the one that's paid the most attention from what I've seen. Um, your connector here, this is how you plug it in the wall. If you have a computer in your house, you probably have a million of these. No idea of the brand. It's UL. It's got a UL stamp on it. 16 gauge. Quiap. Wow, poop is the brand. Sure, whatever. It's a power cord. Make sure you have a, a cir uh, plug it into like a circuit breaker or something at home. Okay, your 16 or your uh, 9 millimeter. 22. It's for your Z. We're good there. These are these are uh, two GT2. So we're good there. Uh, and blacks. What are these for? Six mil. I think one of these is for. What are these for? Oh, these are for the motor. So this is for, um, now here's the problem. A lot of these black ones are MXL and these ones aren't. So they're good there. Uh, these are for your drive gear, uh, for your AB and your Z offset, switch assembly. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry. I missed that blue ball 96. Uh, 
10 euro. Thank you. Uh, interesting topic on the episode. Also nice to see a number of viewers growing. What are we at? Oh my God, 745. Hello. I, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Uh, Christopher Mueller. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, when it comes to the extrusions, check how deep they are threaded. I'm going to check that. Believe me, I'm going to check that. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Thermistor. I don't like how everything is just thrown in here. Um, Thermistor Beta 3950. This looks like the kind you get from TL. This is fine. It's a Beta 3950. There's really not much to them. Uh, heater cartridge. Unlabeled. Okay. So. I'm going to say this because this has happened to me. Whenever you have a heater, you should check it with your multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter and you're building a Voron, go buy a multimeter. Okay. Go to, go to crappy tire, go to the home desk spot, just buy a cheap multimeter. Okay. You need something to check continuity and uh, voltage and amps. Okay. And in this case, resistance. So you should always do a resistance check of your heaters to make sure you have the right one. If you plug a 30 watt, 12 volt heater into 24 volts, you're gonna have a bad time. This one, I don't know. It's not labeled. Um, according to the kit, let's see here. I can't even search it because it's a picture. Uh, it's probably a 50 watt. Where is it? E3D V6 kit, 24 volt. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say. How, is it a 30 watt? Is it a 50 watt? I don't know. It's not labeled. So you're going to have to check it to make sure. Uh, dragon on the slow boat, but you can check it for the viewers. Uh, if it's a dragon, dragons are fine. I like dragons. Thermal fuse, 125C. It's the exact same one I use. These work fine. Uh, there you go. Thermal fuse. Ta-da. Uh, your corner cube bracket thingies for mounting the bed to the, or the bed rails, the bed extrusions to the frame. Those are fine. What else do we got here? These are for your, uh, your Z assembly for your Z drive. The 60 uh, millimeter long five mil dowels. Let's take a look here. Now I, I don't have a mic micrometer at home. 4.95. How much play do we got in these? Where is my... I don't know where I put them. There they are. I'm using mine for reference because these are pouch. I know these are pouch. Okay, they fit. They fit good. They fit good. I don't want to check these off of whatever ones they included because we don't know. That's an unknown. Which I haven't seen them yet. Uh, Tessa tape. Uh, usually this Tessa tape ain't the greatest, but uh, they didn't include it. I, we don't really need this anymore, but it's uh, it's wire harness tape. Still on the list. Uh, Peter is 50 ohm in your kit. Okay. Yeah, you can't go off, uh, whenever you're checking like heaters and motors and whatnot, don't go off the wire colors because you have no guarantee what they used over there. They used whatever they had. Okay, we got the rubber feet, the, the generic air compressor feet. They're generic air compressor feet, nothing to talk about there. Drag chains. Um, oh, I think I missed one. Who was that? Loic, uh, 322, thank you. Sending you multiple of my cereal. I like cereals. So these are your drag chains, the 1015, and was it the 1010? Um, they're kind of chain. There's nothing special about them, but are they the kind that open at least? Okay, so the Z chain does not open. So the chain doesn't open. So we got, what do we got? Unlabeled uh, heater, uh, drag chain, no open. Okay, so you're gonna have to paint because you're gonna have to run your wires through this. 
um, individually. So that's for the Z. And same with the XY. So you're going to have to fish through your wires. Okay. You are not going to be able to open them up. Let me find good drag chain. Okay. So just for comparison, this is, So, oh, oh, oh. see how I can open this? And then I can lay my wire in, and then I can go snap. And it'll take me literally 30 seconds to run my wire through here, if that. This is Igus, by the way. This is Igus chain. This chain, no opening. So you're going to be fishing through floppy silicone wire that's all greased up because you don't want it to get destroyed through, uh, through some crappy drag chain. It'll work. But um, you're going to have some fun. Put it that way. I've done it. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, put my good Igus chain separate. So, sorry, Ken. You're going to have fun with that. Okay. So, the drag chain is drag chain. It is functional, but it's not the kind you want. Okay. End stops. KW10 Special Lisa Store. I call them Lisa Store because that's the store you can buy like 10 of these for two bucks. So these are straight up generic KW10 micro switches. There's really nothing special to these. These aren't the Omron ones. Um, they'll work good enough. You, you shouldn't have any issues with them. Personally, I run like an Omron switch on my Z and then my X and Y while well, I use Hall Effect on my V2s, but on my... Uh, other printers, I just use these for my X and Y, and they're perfectly fine. I have no issues. On the Z, I would have liked if they included a better quality one, but the, I don't think they can. Um, so if you're following along at home, these will work just fine. You will have a good enough repeatability that it shouldn't be an issue. But these are the five cent micro switches for your micro switches. Uh, Chris, five dollars. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, send a single fish line through, attach the cable bundle, then pull through once. Yeah, you could do that. I'm just pointing out things you should be paying attention to. Thanks so much for the stream. Convince me to source my own parts. There you go. Because if you source your own, you're going to get what you want. Okay. Microfits. So they do include uh, microfits. Microfit 3s. Now, these are the Chinese knockoff microfits. These aren't Molex microfits, okay? You can tell that because the China Microfits, I believe, they come with these little tabs on the side, okay? You got these little tabs on the side here that break off. Usually I cut them off. How good do these work? That's what I use in all my printers. I, I bought, um, I made my own Microfit kit. I basically went on AliExpress, let me find it here, and bought like 30 of each size, male and female, and I made my own Microfit kit. So I use these in my printers, okay? Um, downside to them, they do kind of get brittle after a while. So after a couple of years, um, the, the locking lock tabs kind of have a tendency to break off, um, but they are functional, if you put it that way. So they're good enough. At least they come with the Microfit 3s. Okay. Up. Oh. PTFE tube. PTFE tube. Really, on a V2, if you're going direct feed tool head, um, which I'm assuming it has the parts in here for direct feed. I don't know. I, there's another layer I got to go through. Um, this is basically just feeder. It's a reverse Bowden. Now, what I actually like and what I recommend doing is if you're doing reverse Bowden, which you should be doing on a V2, uh, get the 4mm OD, 3mm ID, which this stuff actually is. This is the 3mm ID. Okay, you don't want the really tight stuff because it's more friction. That's more work your extruder has to work on. So perfectly fine. If you want to be Gucci, get the clear stuff so you can see the uh, filament moving through it. Can I link them? I, I'd have to go check my store. Um, Ken, you lucked out. Ken, you lucked out. Uh, He got two SD cards. For the Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty sure you only need one. Because the, the SKRs come with one. 
So, uh, hey Ken, you got two. Congratulations. Um, piece of the boat in here for, I guess, the afterburner. I don't know why you got three, but some little scraps of Bowdens. Probe! P-L-O-5-N. Okay. So, this is the generic probe. Um, the Zedong one. I had one of these running in V226 now for almost three years, and it's still chugging along just fine. Um, some people, these last a week. You gotta be careful because with these probes, depending on the batch you get, sometimes the housings are made out of ABS and they get a little melty. Sometimes they're polycarbonate, sometimes they're nylon. Um, these probes work good enough. The Omron uh, knockoff ones are, that's what I'm, I'm moving towards now. Um, that's what I'm gonna be using in Toasty Boy. I got one of the switch wire. They're a little bit more reliable, but in terms of functionality, these function just fine. It's just, they usually, they might not last as long, okay? But these are the spec ones, so that's what they throw in here, right? Because these guys don't hang out in the Discord and go, oh, hey, maybe I should spend the extra $10 and get a better pro. They go, hey, piece of paper says this. This is what we're going to throw in there. Fans. Uh, Etsy printed parts, you're probably going to pay more than you pay way more than you would if going through PIF and, uh, quality, you have no guarantee. Okay. Sun on fans, apparently, um, Meglev, they're, they're fans. I run cheap China fans in all my printers because they sit in this room by themselves. So I don't really care about noise. Um, Hey, zip ties. That's always good. Idlers. Okay. So these are your XY joint idlers. Uh, 4020 can't be a Sunon. Yeah, I don't think Sunon actually makes 4020. So it's, uh, yeah. Okay. So here's your idler. Okay. Your XY idler. I am not a huge fan. This is, this is separate from the Voron dev team. I am not a huge fan of these idlers. Okay. Um, these pin bearings have a tendency to explode. Um, they really don't last too long. There are some higher quality ones that are a bit better. They last a bit longer. Personally, I just go with an F695 stack. Um, like the same idler setup you use for the smooth idlers, use it for the, the two tooth idlers you need on your XY joints. There is enough teeth in contact that unless you over tighten your belts, you're not gonna really see any issues in the print quality. Um, and they are beefier and they last longer. So these idlers here, I have no idea what brand these are. Um, these bearings are OMG Tiny and MXL. So they're MXL, which is no good. MXL tooth fillers. It says GT2, but they got the flat top. Unless it's the bottom. It's the bottom that's flat. I don't know. I don't trust these. I don't trust these. Yeah, completely unknown. I have no idea how long these would last. Yeah. Sonom does make 2040? Okay. Okay. Um, a few more things here. Here's your drivers. You get exactly seven of them. And uh, the heat sink is potted on with um, some sort of adhesive. Okay. These are Big Tree Tech 2209s. Okay. So 2209s, those are the drivers you want. Those are what we like. Um, Big Tree Tech V1.2. So here's the problem. If you buy the kits, you buy two separate boards or you buy a, a spider, you're going to get enough drivers for your whole board. This, they're, you're getting only what you need. So if you wanted to add another extruder or you damage one of these, you got to order a separate one. So no spares. Again, that's a, a recurring theme with these is you get exactly what's on paper. Um, what else? So we got the foam tape and BHB tape. So if this is legit, this is legit, but that's it says 3M BHB tape. And there's your foam tape for the uh, sealing up your panels for noise deadening and to keep the fumes out or in, in the heat in. I've used this 
This is the cheap foam. It works. I've used it. 3M VHB is very high bond tape. Only put it on stuff you really don't want to come apart. Um, the little clicky thingy to hold your SSR to the DIN rail. These are generic items. Yeah. Uh, we got some wire crimps here. These are for like your terminal connections to your like solid state relay and your power supply and whatnot. So there is that. Uh, they do have some shrink wrap on them. You can, a little bit of extra protection. These are what you would expect to find at a cheap hardware store. So they're okay, I guess. And a single boating connector. Oh, and again, randomly in a bag by itself, a uh, Bat 85 diode. Don't lose this. You need this. Uh, oh, David's here. $49.99. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Everyone say hi, David. Everyone say hi, David. But yeah, again, common theme. Everything just thrown in the box. So um, I don't even know where that Bat 85 went. Hopefully it's in the pile. Yeah. So don't lose that. <laughs> wow, that camera has really bad colors. I gotta play with that one day. Okay, move to electronics. Okay, so power supplies. Okay, it says Meanwell, RS-255. This is power supply for your Raspberry Pi. Okay. Now, why do we spec an RS-25? Why do we spec an actual power supply for the Raspberry Pi instead of a buck converter? These are usually more stable and they're usually higher quality, okay? You're less likely to have issues with a power supply than a buck converter. Um, and it also allows you, if you want to, to have the Pi powered separately. So you can turn the Pi, or turn the printer off and leave the Pi on if you want. Some people like doing that. Um, and honestly, the price difference isn't that much. You can get an RS-25 uh, for the same price as a good buck converter. Oh, somebody became a member, I think. Something popped up. Uh, Kostra, thank you for becoming a member. else we got here okay i think these are controller boards so if i'm not mistaken ken said he was going to get the spider are these the same okay so i'm only going to open one so this is the two trees now i could have sworn ken said he wasn't going to get these but they shipped them anyways it looked like Uh, ordered it the day you told me about the fighter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is the unlabeled box one. Okay. There is no labeling on this at all. Like, it doesn't say... So this is an LPC-based, okay? So this isn't the same chip as the, um, the SKR. Okay, the Big Tree Tech one. This is LPC1768 NXP chip so it still is clipper compatible um and the pinout is the same you just have to follow a different procedure for flashing it i guess but again nobody on the team has this board you got like can you see that discoloration there it's like yeah i don't know if that's like from the flux or whatever but it's got like a weird grimy texture to it So yeah, I don't know. I, I can't vouch for this board because I've never used it, but here it is. Um, it's not a fake SKR. Uh, Big Tree Tech doesn't make the SKRs anymore, okay? Or the SKR 1.4. They are going to the SKR 2. Um, I do have one on the way, or two on the way. I don't know. Um, LPC, is it the normal SKR? I don't know. Oh, is it LPC based? I thought it was the... Where is mine at? I'll find it later. I could have sworn they were the... Oh no, they are the LPC based. I thought they were the other one. Oh, I'm getting it mixed up with the duet. But yeah, long story short, it, it's... 
it's a two trees one. So we don't know about the quality. That's what I'm saying. So on paper, it's the same, but we don't know, you know, for all we know, they cheaped out on the, uh, the, uh, the copper or whatever. It's not, you know, it's one ounce of copper in there. So if you get what I'm saying, that's what I mean. Okay. STM 32. Oh, okay. That's all right. I was thinking it was STM 32. That's what it, that was, what was getting me off. Cause I have an SKR pro for toasty boy. So that's why I was thinking the STM. That's why. So there's too many products. Just let's go back to ramps. Ramps was easy. Was it slow? Yes. Ramps. Okay. What else we got? Oh, we got the screen. Oh, hey. Wow. Even the rubber ducky is lacking. Will duet work? Yes, it will. I've got a duet. This printer right here runs a duet. It's running Clipper, but it's it's duet. Um, the Mini 12864 screen. It's the Mini 12864 screen. I'm not going to bother opening it. It's a screen. It's a nice screen. Uh, that's what I use on like the switch wire, and it's a spec screen. Main power supply. Duck doesn't quack. It, it, it quacks weekly. Okay, meanwhile, LRS 224. Okay. Ken, I'm going to do you a favor. 115. Always make sure your power supply is set for uh, wherever you live in the world. Oh, that feels... Doesn't feel right. Yeah. It's my LRS 12. So it says mean well, but the stickers are completely different. Um, I don't know. They look the same. Anyways. Thought I was gonna build the printer. I'm not gonna build the printer for you. I've, I've already got enough on my plate. And just because I did the one. Actually, that one don't matter. Okay. The Vendo used a fake mean well power supply. Someone reported it getting one and said mean meant well. <laughs> it's a meant well. Uh, buying a kit and replacing the poor incorrect parts. The problem is you're not going to know what you have poor or incorrect until it actually shows up. Okay. Um, because a lot of these are changing on the fly, um, based on feedback and whatnot, plus supply chain. So we're seeing stuff change that like kits are different from previous ones. Okay. Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi. So this is a 3B plus. Yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi 3B plus. Yeah, I don't know. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B plus. What is there to say? It works fine. Um, you don't need the Raspberry Pi 4. You're, you're really not going to see any difference going to the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the 3. Um, I don't have a 4 in any of mine. So let me check one thing here. Okay, there they are. Okay. For a second, I thought he got uh, screwed on something, but it's in there. Okay, rails. So, hey, over 800, dang. I have no idea how I have 800 right now. Hi everyone, hope you're all having good. Make sure you uh, you you like that smash button. Um, follow me on Twitter, at 3 dp Nero. Um, if you like the channel, consider becoming a member. Consider becoming a member. Subscribing if you're not subscribed or uh, Patreon. I don't know the youtuber generic shilling stuff go rails. Let's talk about rails. That's the important part so um, If you're building a spec board on all your rails are the same length So we got one two three four five six seven eight you need eight rails um, These have no branding on them whatsoever 
I'm only going to open one. Okay. Um, I'm just going to open one of these. Because, again, this kit is lent to me. So they come with the little stoppers on the end. And eh. If they're all like this, these rails are fine. Okay. I see no no discoloration. And they're flat enough. They move fine. Now when it comes to the rails, um, they come with oil on them, okay? The oil on them is strictly rust preventative, okay? These are not lubed. What I recommend is if you have something like an ultrasonic bath, take your rails, put the carriages at the end, and just kind of stick them all in your ultrasonic bath in a baggie filled with ISO or whatever cleaner of your choice. Use uh, Apparently don't use green Simple Green. It discolors some rails, not all of them, but some. Um, I think it's Simple Green HD um, or ISO. I use ISO. And you put it in a baggie, that way you don't got to fill up the whole thing with ISO and turn the room into a, uh, a bomb. So, flush them out. Even if you if you don't have a uh, an ultrasonic, just flush them out with ISO or some other degreaser like uh, a, a chlorine-free brake clean. You want to use a cleaner that won't affect the rubber on the wipers, for example, or the plastic, okay? So you want to clean them out. Try to avoid taking the carriage off the rail. A lot of the time with the Chinese rails, because um, again, these aren't high winds. Even if they say they're high winds, they're not high winds. You'll see how they're marked there, right? This says zero and L1 or something in Chinese. Um, usually that's the preload and they're paired up. So what they do is they'll just make all the rails and carriages and all the balls and they'll just size stuff together to what works, okay? So if you take a rail off a carriage or a carriage off a rail and try to put it on another rail, it may be either too sloppy or too tight, okay? So try to avoid mixing them up. Back when we first started, you had to take everything apart because everything was a total mess when it showed up. That's not the case anymore. These come pretty clean and they function pretty well, okay? So you shouldn't have to do full disassemblies anymore. So what I recommend is just clean them off really good. And then what you can use is, I don't know where I put it. Over here. I use like a, literally an old, uh, like, what is it? A medicine dropper um, filled with grease. And there's like a little gap here where you can kind of see the ball bearings. Smush the grease in there. Use like a pin to try and push it in. Move it around and just get as much grease in there and you're good to go. High quality real rails come with uh, grease uh, ports on it. These don't. It's obviously easier on the bigger rails than the MGM 9s. But yeah. So these rails look okay. Um, they look like the robot dig ones, I think. But yeah. So, can you use acetone? Um, you got to be careful because there's plastic and rubber on it. So I really wouldn't use acetone. Uh, LDO, yeah. For okay, so I, I'm generalizing here. Okay, some rails come cleaner than others. LDO is a pretty good company. Um, for the ones that for Toasty Boy, I still ran them through the ultrasonic, but that's I do all my rails like that. Okay, most of my machines run CNA rails. Um, and I've had no issues with them. So, so that's that. So the rails are good. Um, so far we found some MXL stuff. Um, belts cut to size instead of any extra. Uh, unlabeled heaters and drag chain issues. So, so far it's okay. Um, I'm going to put all this back in here so I don't lose anything. Because again, this is a borrowed kit. And I think the next thing is the bed under this. Let me just kind of, I will package this the same way they packaged um, it to ship. And by that, I mean, just kind of yeet it all into a bin, as the kids would say. I'll try and not crush the drivers. Who ships drivers like that? Seriously. So, plus so far, Ken, you got two SD cards. Congratulations. Although, you are you know what? You're going to have to use one of these to flash your SKRs because the SKRs uh, didn't come with uh, a card unless 
double check. Yep. Okay, so if you're buying the kit, the uh, the SKRs don't come with an SD card. You need an SD card to flash them. So I don't know if that's why they included two SD cards. Is so you can use one of the SD cards to flash the SKRs. Because obviously you're going to need an SKR or a, an SD card in your Raspberry Pi. But uh, usually they only come with like a 128 megabyte one, not a big one. But uh, these don't come with one. So... Does the kit say it comes with two? Panels, electronics, where's electronics? Um, and we haven't gone into the SSR yet. I haven't seen the SSR yet. I don't see SKR. Yeah, I don't see it on there. Oh well. Okay. I, and I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying, I'm not really following chat as much as I should normally do. Um, I'm trying to, I'm under a time limit right now. So. Oh no, I'm knocking stuff down. My panels, my Fermio lab panels. There you go, get covered in dog hair. Okay, bedtime. Your kit had two SD cards too. Okay, so the kit, it probably comes with two SD cards um, just to simply, so you can flash the SKRs, looks like. Okay, Peter, Vivendo. Now, um, does have the 468MP adhesive, or at least it says it does. It should be legit. Um, this looks a lot like the Kinovo ones. Mine's installed, so I can't directly compare. It looks like they're no longer sheathing these wires with that really heavy duty. Um, there used to be like a heavy duty like sheath on these wires. Um, I was seeing them a lot with the V0 kits and this doesn't fit through the drag chains on the V0. With the V2 and V1, it's not that big of an issue, but with the V0, that was an issue. And yeah, this looks pretty much exactly like a Kinovo. I don't know if you could tell the difference between the two, but this looks like a, a Kinovo, like in terms of exactly how it looks is a Kenovo. I re this should be more in the middle, but it's not gonna break the day, okay? Does this kit include the printed parts? No, it does not. Most kits do not. Okay, let's take a look at the bed. So, we got our flex plate here. Does it have PEI on it? It does not have PEI on it. Okay, so it's textured on one side. That is not amber looking at all. That's like... That doesn't look... too PEI to me. Just to compare, this is my energetic PEI. Okay. And it's got a sticker on the back. This is just sheet metal. So the flex plate is only textured. And uh, PI is normally amber colored. That looks pretty uh, not amber colored. Or black if you're cool. And by the way, that fingerprint ain't mine. That is, um, it's already rusting actually. So, whoever was packaging this up in uh, in Shenzhen, if you wanna steal their fingerprint and steal their identity, you probably could pull it off of this, but it's actually kind of rusting a little bit. There's a little, now it's not like, you know, it's gonna damage it rust. Quit two seconds with a scotch brake pad would clean that up, but yeah. Uh, Chris, my PI sheet is amber. Okay, so yeah, so it looks like they're changing or a different batch or something. Um, I don't know if it's, what is it, PEX? I know Wham Bam started using PEX because it's cheaper, but it isn't as good as PI. Um, magnet. Uh, 3M300 S or LSE is the adhesive on it. 
Um, I'd rather see 468 MP, but it is what it is. Okay. The plate, the actual plate. It's machined. It is not blanched ground. Okay. So it looks like the bottom is just... Okay. This precision machined aluminum plate this is precision. Pre yeah, this is precision machined aluminum plate. So the surface has marks of processing as we tested. The flatness of this plate is 0 0.2.1. Does that actually mean it is that? Well, unfortunately, I don't have my uh, granite surface plate and midatorial height gauge at home. Um, I don't own one at all, but work has one. Let's take a look at this plate. Okay, so this is fully machined. Now, is this de-stressed cast aluminum? That's the question. So normally with the, I, okay, the cast aluminum tooling plates, oh, they're not cast or whatever. They're they're cast, they're shaped to size, they're de-stressed to a heating process, and then they're blanched ground, okay? Regardless, we're just going to call them cast because that's easy. That's the terminology people use, okay? So, is it flat? That's the question. Because there's two different things you're looking for. There is, there's, there's flatness. And then there's like, how oh, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since my metrology class. Okay. But basically there's, there's flatness, which is the difference between the highest point and the lowest point. And then there is like, so it can be flat, but it could also be curved. Right. So if I were to shine a light under that. And what you got to be careful with is when it comes to the uh, the process of actually making it, if it is not de-stressed, so say it's just, you know, aluminum from like, you know, it, it's just formed aluminum and they go ahead and make the plate out of it. Yeah, you can machine it flat. The moment you heat it up, it's going to taco. So... And this is just a PCB ruler. This isn't like a, a super flat straight edge. That's the flattest thing I got on hand. It honestly doesn't look too bad. I will say they need to trim out the head on their bridge port because you can feel the step here. So if, you, if you're milling, right, and this is with a probably three inch. Oh, they're in China, so it'd be metric. Yeah, two and three quarter, 70 mil. So with the fly cutter, it comes along and, you know, it, it machines this and then they move over and they machine the next one. So it's a three inch fly cutter. The problem is if the head of the machine is not trammed out, it's not uh, leveled basically, what'll happen is instead of the cutter being perfectly flat, it'll be like this, right? It'll be off a little bit, right? And you can go in there like, if I had a bridge board, I'd do a video on it. It's cool. But you have to level the head, right? You have to tram the head out on the X and Y. So when you step over, you're basically, it looks like a sawtooth pattern. Now, obviously, we're talking maybe a maybe a thou here. But when you run up your finger between these two high points, you can feel it. There is a bump there between every one of these points, okay? Now, once you put a layer of adhesive on it, a magnet, uh, a spring steel sheet and then a layer of PEI on that, you're probably not going to notice it. Okay. So odds are this is flat enough. Okay. It's got the mounting holes for mounting it to the bed, to the frame. It comes with two tapped holes here. If you want to mount your um, heater th uh, thermal um, fuse to one side, you can. I'd rather mount it to the, the bed itself or the heater mat itself. And then you have a spot for your ground. Okay. So it is machined okay. Now the question is, I have no idea what type of metal this is, okay? So, how thick is it? 10 mil or eight mil? Probably eight mil. 
7.5 mil. Um, now, what do they say it is? Build plate. So it's saying it's mic 6, 5 sixteenths. Okay. Well, 5 sixteenths is 312 thou, and this is, eh, yeah, it's 5 sixteenths. It's close enough. You know what? It's 5 sixteenths, and then they, they flattened it. Then they did that. So, slightly undersized, but that ain't going to be a big issue. Should be okay. If As long as it's as long as it's the right type of metal, you'll be fine. Um... But I have no way of guaranteeing that. I don't have like a, the the equipment to check it. So you'll find out when you heat it up for the first time. Yeah, I guarantee you it's an eight mil plate that they uh, they ground or they machine. I'd rather see uh, flashing marks. So if you look at your plate and you see swirls like a like a semicircle pattern on it, that means it's blanched ground. And usually how they make that, they make like the four by eight sheet of it. And then they blanch ground the whole thing, or blanchard ground, or whatever the proper term is. And then they uh, they go ahead and cut it into the sheets. So the bed is okay for an AliExpress bed. The bed's fine as long as it doesn't taco on you, which um, unfortunately I can't check. Okay, and the last part. Okita. What is Okita? Because that's what these motors are. So we got our frame here. Um, let's go through this. Let's go through this. So, yeah. We got our 80 tooth here. These look like the Pouge ones. They are two GT, so we're okay there. We've got our hot end and a foam or an air cylinder thing. So it is a, uh, it's a V2. Oh. Don't be using this for naughty things. Um, so it is, a, it's a V6, I mean, with an orange sock on it. Um, there's no markings to say what kind this is. And it probably has a stainless steel heat brake on it and a generic brass nozzle, but that's that. F695 bearings, RS, uh, Fushi. Okay, Fushi bearings. I like Fushi bearings, so we're good there. Uh, check aluminum frame lengths, I'll check that. Um, let's electrical switch. This isn't really the one we recommend because depending on where these have a tendency to be in low quality and can burn up. So we do recommend a better fuse than this, but this will work. This is all, okay, this is all packaged properly. Hey, look at this. This is actually, you know, proper packaging here, okay? Why couldn't they do this with the electronics? You know, the stuff that's metal and can probably take a little bit of banging around is packaged all individually. Okay, there's your uh, Bontech kit. Your BMG kit for the uh, afterburner tool head. It's in a little container. Don't look bad. Uh, there's our SSR. So our SSR is a gold solid state relay. 25 amp. Okay, so here's the thing with uh, now, obviously, this ain't an Omron or a Kratom, but I've always kind of held to this belief when it comes to the uh, offshore manufactured um, SSRs. They do work, okay? The problem is they usually overrate them, okay? So what that means is if it's rated for 25 amps, don't be putting 25 amps through it. But if you only need 5 amps and it's a 40 amp one, so if you only need 5 amps of actual protection and you're using a 40 amp rated SSR off AliExpress, 
you'll probably be okay. Okay. Now I'm not going to recommend you ever buy one. I'm going to say, go get an, uh, a Crydom or an Omron or another proper quality one. But I know people will, if you are going to buy the cheap one, get one that's overrated. Okay. Uh, 625 RS bearings. They're a little, yeah, they feel okay. These ones have no brand marking on them. So the, the F695s say Fushi. These ones have no brand name on them. Okay. Motors. So got your afterburner motor. Okay. No marking. Now these are the stepper motors. If anyone wants to uh, look them up there. But these are Okita. Um, point one four newton meters. Oh, that's only the the little motor. There's the big motor. Point five nine newton meters. So I think these are eighty four ounce. These should be okay. Um, the thing is, though, uh, I've never even heard of this motor company before. Um, Okita is for pancake. And what are these ones? No, no, these are these are Okita too. The big ones are Okita too. But um, I've never heard of this motor company before. I think this is the brand that Buddy had the uh, issue with the drive shaft not being centered. They were it was out a bit, so his uh, Z wobbled. I feel okay. So they should be fine, but again, I I've never even heard of this motor company. So for reference, um OMC steppers are spec. So is uh LDO motors are also quite acceptable. So Okita motors, I have no clue. Unfortunately, I don't have a reference to them, right? Like we, it's in the box. That's what you get. Are they good? Are they bad? We don't know. Okay. Really don't want to pull out all the extrusions, but I think that's all we got. Here. Now I don't have a 24 inch Vitatoyo uh, vernier to fully check all these. So I can tape measure them. Oh, you got your uh, DIN rails. I think I have a tape measure somewhere. Yes, I got a tape measure. I can, I can. If you talk to the seller, they will put LDO. If they can put LDO, why don't they just put LDO? So here's the thing when it comes to the extrusions. It's okay if they're not exactly to spec, okay? So if you need 300 millimeters of extrusion and it's 299, as long as all the ones that are supposed to be 300 are all 299, you're okay, okay? You run into issues when they're all over the place. And when they're all over the place, then you run into issues because you can't square stuff up easily. Now, obviously, checking with the tape measure ain't, you know, full on proper measuring, but what I got. Now, these follow the LDO method of uh, cutting, tapping, and then anodizing. So these are anodized after they are cut to size. Okay. Yeah, a micrometer is more accurate than a vernier. I live where I live. Uh, most people refer to vernier calipers as just verniers. 
I don't know if that's like a regional thing, but every tool shop I've been to, that's just how they go. Okay. So, for those unawares, when it comes to aluminum, you want three times thread diameter. So if you are putting a five millimeter screw into aluminum, you want 15 millimeters of thread engagement to maximize strength, okay? Beyond that, it doesn't really make sense. And shorter than that, you're not getting full strength. So we have 18 millimeter of thread. Tap deep enough, at least the one I check. I'm not gonna check them all. So honestly, that's not bad. And that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, that's it. If there's anything else under here. Yep, that's it. So that is the kit. It is what it is. Now I gotta figure out how to fit this all back in here. My frame holes were all cut in the light. Oh yeah, these aren't Masumi extrusion. If you're getting extrusions off AliExpress, they are not Masumi. It, it's like high winds, okay? If you are buying high wind rails off AliExpress, they're not high wind. Look how much legit high winds cost. And if you're finding them on AliExpress, either they are uh, surplus ripped out of a machine high winds, or they are straight up knockoff high winds. Um, yeah. But yeah, that is the kit. Um, it seems okay. Um, now, would I recommend buying it? I'm not going to recommend buying a kit. Flat out. Um, because even this kit, there are things in here I don't like, so I won't recommend it. Flat out. Um, I don't know anything about the motors. The SSR, eh. Uh, some of the pulleys are questionable. Uh, the way the belts are set up, the way the screw count is. Um, if, if, if I had a store, okay? If I had, you know... Fucking Northern Raving addi Additive Manufacturing. I was selling this kit. I would not be happy selling the kit the way it is, okay? There are things I don't like about this, and it's a kit, so it's all or nothing, okay? Now, if you know what you're looking for, and you're okay with rebuying stuff, you could go this route, okay? Um, this kit honestly isn't bad. I will say, um, there are stuff like, you know, a V6. I, you know, I'd rather have a dragon, so I'm wasting money buying a V6 because you're, you're saving a bit of money, um, but you're going to be rebuying stuff. And when you're rebuying stuff, you're paying individual shipping. Um, it, it'll add up and depending on, you know, which build you're going with, which side you're going with or size, um, it might cancel out. Believe me, I know the opportunity to buy everything, you know, one and done is, is nice. Um, but you could get burned because the thing is this kit was shipped two three weeks ago how are they now we don't know stuff in here is different than people who first bought the kits because the first kits came with ldo motors um these aren't ldo motors um and skr 1.4s and these aren't skr 1.4s um so the thing is there is no guarantee now this is probably one of the better kits um, I've heard some pretty bad stuff from some of the Blue Rolls kits. Um, the Magic Studio kits, people say good things about, um, but they're not available as often. So a lot of people jump to these. These are the kits that sell the most, okay? Um, the thing that I really don't like about the kits is you really have to know what you're looking for before you go into the build, okay? Because... A lot of people are buying the kits not knowing. They're thinking it's like a, a, a Prusa experience where they could just buy the kit, follow the manual, slap it together. And like the heater cartridge, for example, there, it's not labeled. Are you 100% sure it's a 24 volt heater cartridge? Okay. Because if you don't know for sure it's a 100 or it's a 24 volt and you wire it in as a 12 volt, and it's a 12 volt because they threw the wrong one in there and it's not labeled. Um, you could fry electronics, you can damage the printer. And then you don't know what you're doing because everything's fried and odds are you, you you won't know how to fix it um that's what i don't like about the kits um 
you, you don't have a guarantee and there's no um there's no way to ensure that it's good okay there's there's nobody overlooking it there's no oversight um it just kind of it is what it is you get what you get um and that's it so yes it's nice it comes with all the panels it comes with you know everything pretty much ready to go um, there's a few things you're going to have to play with, but for the most part, it ain't bad. But, see, it doesn't fit back in the box. Sit on the box to tape it back up. Um, but yeah, so that's a kit. Um, yes, I printed Toasty Boy and CF Metal Eye. Uh, anyone have any questions? Got about 10 minutes here before I got to head out. So yeah, so that is a Voron in a box. That is a kit. Um, honestly, I am I thought it would be a lot worse than what it is. Um, but I still, if I was, if I had a store, I would not sell it like this, okay? There's just too much to it that I don't like. For it to be a one and done, go with it. Um, because the problem is people buy these and they think that's all they need and they're good to go and they start building and they run into issues. Um, so if you, long story short, if you know what you're doing, okay, you've built printers before, you have a decent knowledgeable background about 3D printing, um, you, you haven't built one, but you've watched lots of videos or whatever, and you, you, you know what you can look for, and you know what's good and what's bad, and you're just looking to, to save a little bit of time, and you're okay buying this, going through it all, double checking everything, and possibly replacing some components, this could be an attractive off option, okay? However, there is no guarantee anything in here is good because this is random store on AliExpress who's in it for the money. It is what it is. I don't have any tape. I gotta find tape. What is your opinion on the Mosquito versus Mosquito Magnum? Um, if you only go with high flow, if you plan on printing either super fast or with a larger than 0.6 nozzle or 0.6 or larger nozzle and print fast. Uh, Chris, $5. Uh, GT2 rounded tooth profile is rounded trench, but closed flat on the peaks. Google search image. Okay, so I was wrong. So they might be, they might be two GT. Um, I still think the bearings, the bearings themselves, the idler bearings did kind of feel kind of crappy. Um, What is Kenneth rumoring about? I don't know. I, I, I'm i sorry. But um, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't able to follow the chat much tonight. How many star out of 10? Oh, um, seven. Like if, if you, if this was like my first intro to a Voron, um, I could, I could build a printer out of this, right? I, I could easily build a printer out of this. Okay. Um, but I'm coming at this from a, you know, this is our work and this is somebody taking our work and putting it in a box and selling it. Would I be proud of this? Mm. Like, I won't recommend a kit unless it's like our quality. Um, Ken, there, he keeps bringing that up. I joked about it on the last stream about reality buying Voron. No. Boron's open source. You can't sell that. If Reality wants to send me a printer, I'll, I'll take a look at it, but Reality ain't building a Voron. Uh, I have to find tape. Okay, so yeah. So, sell some kits. I am not going to invest the money into a kit. It, honestly, if you wanted North American Vorons, like Nor a Voron built in North America, you're looking at like three to five grand a printer. People are going after these because they're a thousand. Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to sell kits. I don't have the time for that. <laughs> uh, we're going to look for, for bombs. Yeah, go to vorondesign.com um, and then go to the configurator for whatever printer, pump, punch in the numbers you want for whatever size, and it'll spit out a bill of materials and a sourcing guide. The sourcing guide is all components. If, if you're, you're sourcing stuff, take a look at the sourcing guide first, okay? 
The sourcing guide is all components that we have personally used and we know they work. Okay, they're not necessarily the best components. Um, for example, like a V6 is listed on there. There are better hot ends than the V6, but we know it works. So it's on there, okay? These motors, um, how are, how is their, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff to stepper motors in terms of like inductance and stuff like that. We have no idea how well these motors work um, when you push them to 300 millimeters a second, right? We, we have no idea how these motors behave on a Vora. Like, so I have no idea if these motors will be okay for most people, or if, you know, you start trying to print speed benchies to start crapping out at 250 millimeters a second on a curve. We don't know. There is no testing on these motors. So that's why I can't recommend the kit because there's just stuff in here we've never tested. We don't know. Same with the SKR 1.5s. The, who knows? Maybe they start popping caps after six months of use. We don't know. So. Okay, um, I got to go to work. <laughs> I got work in like 15 minutes. So I got to make my lunch. Um, again, this was just me kind of looking at a kit. I know a lot of people want to take a look at boron kits and I'm not going to stop you from buying them. Okay, um, people are going to buy kits. It's just what people do. Okay, um, just make sure you know what you're doing before you dive into buying a kit. If you're buying a kit, go through the whole thing once you get it. If you have any questions about anything, ask in the Voron Discord. If you see, see anything that's funny looking, take pictures of it, share it in the Voron Discord. That's how we know about these. If there are some kits that we straight up don't recommend because like they're doing all kinds of funky stuff. But the problem is people just buy what's cheap so we can't really stop anyone. And it's, you know, it's an open source project. Anyone can make a kit. If you're going on AliExpress and you see a kit from a vendor that has sold two of them and they're the cheapest ones, don't go with that kit, okay? Search by most orders. Honestly, the form bought ones are the ones that sell the most. Um, it is what it is. Um, make a Fetus TL hybrid. Fetus and TL have the same OEM manufacturer. They already work together. Um, kit equals import taxes. Um, I think he paid like $54 on this guy. They always undervalue him. So anyways, um, I got to go to work, guys. I hope you found this interesting. I don't know how I had almost 800 people watching this at some point, but you guys are all awesome. Um, anyone who donated to the stream, you guys are awesome. Anyone who just watched the stream, you guys are awesome. Um, anything that you put towards the channel goes right back into the channel. Supporting me, supporting the content I create, the things I do. Um, hope you learned something new today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. I don't know, ring the bell. Follow me on Twitter. Um, go to Only Benchies. Good times there. Um, you guys take care. I'm going to go work now. And uh, peace.